Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today I present to you a dressmaker's guide to French lace. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Well, welcome to A Dressmaker's Guide to French Lace. Grab you a cup of coffee or a hot tea because as you can tell, this is a very long, comprehensive video. I have done my best to gather my information for you so that we can talk about what French Lace is, where you can find it, at least I talk about where I find it, and let's also talk about what varieties are there, how you order it, and also how to cut and sew it. So here I am just scrolling through. Um, there's a lot to learn about French Lace and it's fascinating to me. Um, basically, you can do a Google search. This is a Google image search on French Lace Levers Looms, that's L-E-A-V-E-R-S, Looms, L-O-O-M-S. That is how the lace is woven on Levers Looms, and they are over 100 years old. This is a very old, ancient craft. Um, French lace, there's, there's not a lot of options as far as where it is woven nowadays. Um, the French lace industry used to employ over 30,000 people, and now they only employ around 300 people. So as you can imagine, this is a dying precious art, um, and the lace that they produce is certainly a very special work of art. Um, so we will talk some more about that throughout the video. Um, I do want to mention, you know, my first point was, what is French lace? Obviously, it's lace that's made in France, but I'm speaking specifically about the, fr the French lace that is woven on these levers looms that are very old and historic. Um, so I'm going to speak from the perspective of sourcing from this company, Gilmore Lace. Um, you may have another uh, source that you use in the U.S. for French lace. Uh, but I need to remain true to myself and to my audience and um, be completely transparent and letting you know that I don't have multiple sources that are direct from the mill um, for French lace in the U.S. I only use Gelmer Lace and they have helped me with this video. They were also interested in educating up-and-coming bridal seamsters. Um, so they were very generous to us and sent us samples for us to make this video. So I just want to be clear um, that this is a wonderful company in my experience. Um, this, is, this video, though, is not a commercial for them. It is, first and foremost, an informational video about lace, but you're going to hear me mention them a lot because they are my source. Um, and of course, if you're getting into this industry, I know a major concern is um, who are your sources going to be? So they have been very faithful and great. So what I'm doing is I'm scrolling through this website here. You can go to their website and you can go through their galleries and um, research other places in the U.S. that they provide lace to. And there's also just information about the history of lace and the types of laces on their website. It's a very, very helpful and interesting source. So these first two bullet points in this video, what is it and where to find it, obviously they're bleeding together a little bit. But on Gilmore Lace, you can read more about the history of their company. But I want to draw attention to one particular feature that they offer is that they never discontinue a lace. That is very important when you get into sourcing as a professional bridal seamster. You want to make sure that all of your laces and supplies are what we call reorderable. You don't want to be mid-project, run out of something, call your jobber or your source and find out that they don't have any more of that. So that's a beautiful feature of using Gelmore Lace. All right, so the third, uh, what varieties are there? Well, let's just open the mail and see. Ooh, 
samples. So for each of these samples, I'm going to kind of zoom the ticket in so you can see the item number, just in case if you're interested in that lace, you would know how to find it. These item numbers, let me tell you, they are so, so helpful. This is their um, Ivory Allison lace in the Marilyn style, and it has the metallic cording. See the metallic gimp in there? So pretty. Let's see what else? Ooh, ivory and gold. The brides are gaga for gold right now. Wow. Look at their swing lace. With the gold. That's beautiful. So I know it's a pain when you're catalog shopping or online shopping, you can't handle the stuff and look at it up close. So I'm going to try to get all these samples super close to the camera, let you see the item numbers, let you see the details of what these laces look like. And I know it's going to make the video go a little bit more slowly, but hey, it's kind of like shopping, right? This, they say, is very difficult to rip. It almost won't rip. You can see it's a little thicker and stronger than the Tool Illusion. So what I'm using this for, I have a project right now um, that I'm doing an overlay on a skirt in this. Um, and then I also um, am using this for a cathedral veil. This is normally not um, considered like a fine enough tool. like. It's pretty open work you know it's not teeny teeny tiny diamonds in there it's bigger ones um, this is normally a little thick for a cathedral um, but as you can tell it still has a nice hand to it like it's still it's it's plenty light uh, but the idea is if you have a cathedral veil at like an outdoor wedding barn venue kind of thing and um, they pay to have all this beautiful lace added to it. Um, and then they go traipsing around. They're going to rip it. <laughs> so if they want a more durable veil, um, this French tool is a good answer for that. Um, so that hopefully they can still have an intact veil at the end of the day. Are you ready for some instant lace amazingness? This is their Marilyn lace. This is their most popular Alisson lace um, in their 36 inch wide. So it's going to have this beautiful edge that we see in their um, 6 inch wide. I, I forget the width. I think it's like 6 inches, uh, 12 inches something like that. So anyways, what you do is you can order the same lace, the same design in different widths. So see how this right here is the same as this right here. So this just doesn't have all of this stuff in the middle for you to cut the appliques out. So this is the way lace works. Okay, it's going to have a selvage edge. Um, it comes off of a loom. Okay, so if the loom is six feet wide, um, or uh, I'm sorry, six yards wide, if the loom is six yards wide, then your piece of lace that you buy is in six yard quantities. So you can buy six yards, uh, direct from them or of course you can buy you know three six yard segments that kind of thing Whew. okay so I called them to clarify the looms think European are five or six meters long but the pieces are sold by the yard however long that ends up being because they're sold in America um, if you want less than six yards, you're going to be looking at using a job or somebody online that buys, um, 
a lot of times you'll find them like on eBay or something. They'll buy the long piece and they'll cut off and they'll sell smaller segments, but you're going to pay more per yard or whatever that way than you will if you just buy the whole piece direct from uh, Gelmore Lace. If you buy it direct from them, um, then you can keep the extra in stock to have on hand. I've done it both ways. So when I started out in bridal, I would have to buy just what I needed um, from jobbers online. And I was paying a tremendous markup. And so over time, I noticed as I was pulling more and more lace and using it, I said, this has got to stop. I have got to find out where this is actually coming from and order direct and then just have the extra. So um, I worked very, very hard to find this source. Let me just tell you a little bit about the story of me finding Gilmore Lace. So like I said, I had been buying this from jobbers online and paying a huge markup. And um, I, I knew it was French lace, but I could not find it um, from the most direct source in the U.S. So I have a cousin who lived in France at the time. <laughs> I was like, I kid you not. I'm like, you speak French, I don't speak French. Get online and find where this is coming from. So we found the place and um, so I was ordering direct from there for quite a while. Here, let me go greet this person. Okay, I'm back. So anyways, yeah, I was ordering it directly like, like this, you can see it in France. I was ordering it direct and the person I was getting it from was like, you know you can get this from New York for the same price, right? And I was like, oh, whoops, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> so then I found out I didn't have to use like a translator relative and order this. And so I've been getting it from Gelmore Lace. They are up in NYC. Um, and as I told you, um, I'm doing a sourcing retreat up in NYC next month. And so I hope to meet with them and vlog the visit and show you all of their stock. That's going to be so much fun. But anyways, um, they sent me this. Well, part of it was an order for my shop. And then part of it they sent um, sponsored just so I can show you guys. So that was awesome of them to do that. Now, one thing I want you to notice, the reason why I pulled these two up, this is the color ivory. This is the color silk white. So silk white is like, uh, we also call it a light ivory probably in the industry. We hear that a lot. This is the lighter ivory. This is more like, almost like a buttercream ivory or something. This is like, you can see the difference. I don't know how it looks on your monitor. This is not a white. This is the ivory and silk white. Now I wanna show you something. I am gonna do a complete video about this probably. But in my journey, when I was looking um, for this lace, um, I came across a source. It actually turned out to be coming from China, and I knew that was not what I was looking for. I knew I was looking for French lace. But um, so I, I found this source that supposedly had the Maryland lace, this, from China, right? So I was like, send me a sample. And I, I knew it wasn't going to be right, but I just wanted to see what they were doing. And I want you guys to see this so bad. Okay, this is the real. This is the knockoff that I ordered. Look at the difference. Okay, I'm going to bring it in close for you. That's the French lace. That's the knockoff. I mean, no comparison at all. Look at the difference in the quality. And I am so excited to have this side by side. Also, this is white. That was the other reason why I wanted to show you. This is the silk white. This is the white. This is that real bluey kind of white that you get. <laughs> so look at the difference like in this flower. And look at the eyelash it is terrible. 
compared to that. So yeah, get the real stuff is the lesson there. <laughs> All right, let me show you some more. Okay, so this is just kind of um, stock samples. And then also I'm gonna show you in this video how to use the larger pieces of lace to create appliques, okay? Um, this is a great example of that also. You can picture this kind of, you know, being an off the shoulder, like bolero wrap thing for a bride or using this across the bodice and this going across the top and this going across the waist. It would be beautiful for that. But you can also picture cutting very carefully around the edge of this here and here and making this beautiful trim swing lace um, and then also getting these matching appliques out of the deal so that's how you use that um, I forget the name of this lace it's a beautiful design that's the number there obviously that's in an ivory um, but I always call it like I always say it has like trellis trellis work in it because doesn't that remind you of a trellis in a garden a lot of the really pretty laces have that. So there's that. And this is, I think she said this is their second most popular lace. This is another lace um, that they sent me there from Gilmore. And this is the item number here. And this is also the silk white. Okay, so silk white and ivory. That's the color difference again. Um, I just want to show it to you in several instances so you can really get the picture of that. You can see that this would be beautiful for the skirt of a gown. Wouldn't this be amazing? But again, you could also use it to make appliques. Um, now picture how you could get a trim out of this. This is the way we think about lace when we look at it. Okay, you could go like this and just get that trim or watch this. You could go like this all the way up here and come down, grab that rose, go way up high again. Do you see how that repeats like that? So you'd have these tall peaks and then these short roses. That would be such a beautiful dramatic lace. And then you would get all of these appliques out of the deal. So that's how you do that. I'm going to demo cutting some of this so you can see how to get the appliques out of it and then also how to design with them. So I want this to be a really comprehensive video and show you about the different types of lace, the different colors, and the different applications. So let's keep going. All right, so as you can see, this has that same, the same Maryland um, swing to it on the edge. Um, this is in an ivory and so this is going to show you like the design here. This is the width. So this is the 36 inch in the ivory. Okay. So there's that. Guys, this lace is amazing. Like I wish I could explain to you the difference. Um, when I brought out um, that first, that first uh, piece of lace that I showed you, the large one, that was that large roll and it was six yards long. When I brought that out the other night, um, I was making a custom jacket for a bride. The mom, literally she cried when she saw just the lace, not even cut. It is, it's just a work of art. So this is how you get swing lace. And I wanted to explain this to you. This is how it comes off of the loom. And this is the eyelash. It's what we call eyelash for obvious reasons. This is where the eyelash comes from. It's the jump from the, from the one lace to the next has that eyelash in between it. And so when you cut them apart, it creates the eyelash. So here, here it is. That's a 103. Can you see that? Let's see. Is that a 103? Yeah, 103 slash. Okay, silk white. So the way you use this is you cut along the top of this 
retaining that eyelash. Now, to be honest, some brides hate eyelash. Most brides love it because it's a nice way, a delicate way of tapering off. Some brides will ask you to cut the eyelash off. That's fine. I just do whatever they ask, but it's considered an indicator of value. Um, so I try to explain that to my brides when they say, oh, I don't like that fuzzy stuff on the edge. What is that? Can you cut that off? And I show them like, okay, this is lace that came across the Pacific and see how it ends versus this. And I'll tell them, I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll cut it off. But you're taking a new car and you're asking them to rip out the leather seats and put in upholstered seats. So that's the way I describe it to them. And then once they realize it's an indicator of quality, a lot of times they'll, they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and they kind of embrace it. So this is a lot of swing lace. You can imagine how helpful this is. This is your little edge that you're gonna put around your necklines or the ends of sleeves. It's just a nice small little border that hasn't doesn't have too deep of a swing to it. So this is used for all sorts of applications. Um, so here's another swing lace, okay? This is the same, but the same numbers as you'll recognize, but this is, this is it having been cut off, okay? So that's how it looks when it's cut off, and you can imagine how useful that is. This is how you use it. All right, so here is a metallic. Now, what I want to show you is we were talking about that the beautiful uh, Maryland lace, and this is the six inch, that's the number six there, the six inch wide. We were talking about that. This is the Alisson lace, okay? This is named for um, the area in France that it was originally loomed. Um, Alison. Okay, so this we would call when it doesn't have the cording. This is cording. This stiff stuff. It's actually hand sewn on. This is what comes off the loom. Just the Chantilly lace. And then they, they cord it. And then it's Alison. So Chantilly is also the name of an area in France. Um, and so the lace that comes from Chantilly is actually Chantilly lace. But a lot of times you will hear people say, this lace is Chantilly and this is Alison. And the only distinction that they're actually referring to when they say that, they're not talking about the historical, the location, they're not getting into all that. What you are normally hearing them talk about is corded versus non-corded. Um, so you need to really kind of um, ask about that when somebody is talking about a Chantilly. Here's an example of, this is not a real lace, Chantilly lace from France. This is a, this is a knockoff, but it's a very good knockoff. This is one that we use in the shop quite often, and um, it's very popular on wedding gowns right now. You can tell it's a knockoff when you get really close. And just see how, like, how machined that looks. Does that make sense? Compared to, now this has a metallic cord in it, okay? So that's, ignore that part. But look at the stitching on this. Okay? Versus this. And if you could feel the difference, too, um, what this stuff is made of is it feels a lot better than what this stuff is made of So this is what when you order Chantilly lace, this is what comes in and it's not going to have that Cording on it that gives it all that body. Okay. Now I want to show you the exact same piece of lace Both of these are the exact same. This is ivory. This is silk white. So this is just another demonstration of the color difference ivory silk white very, very subtle. Here's white. Same exact lace. So if we put it kind of on a spectrum, it would be like this. Ivory, silk white, white. 
Okay, so I always tell people when you're trying to tell the difference between ivory and white, blur your vision, blur your eyes, and look at the light that is reflecting off of the gown. If you can see some yellow, some warm tones in the light that's reflecting off the gown, just that little halo of light, you're looking at ivory. If you see some cool blues coming out of that reflection, you're looking at white. So that's how I tell the difference. The quality of the lace is just the same. It's just a color difference. I love that she sent these. You guys need to give her a thank you down there in the comments. She's, she cut her lace and got all this together for us just so I can do this video teaching you guys the difference um, and orienting you um, to her store and the experience of purchasing from her so you can kind of know what you're doing. It can be, you know, it's kind of intimidating the first time you order from somebody. Okay, this is the same thing. Let's compare again. This is going to be the corded and the not corded. The exact same thing. This just has the letter R. And this one you can see the crossed out R. The color is ivory. Color is the same. Only difference is the cording is different. And this pattern is a little bit bigger. Do you see that? Rose, rose, swoop. Rose, rose, swoop. And look how much shorter this is. So the design, it looks really, it's the same, but this is a little bit longer of a design, if that makes sense. And it could even be that it comes off like this, but it draws up when they cord it. I don't know. That would be interesting. Someday, guys, okay, let me tell you this. I hate travel. I'm scared of travel. I'm a homebody. If ever I get the nerve to go to France, I want, I want to tour these places. And you know I'm taking my video camera with me. But I want to tour these places and see these looms. The white versus the ivory in the same. And these are the same length now. There's that selvage I was talking about where it comes off the end of the loom. All right. And then here's some other samples that she sent us. I was showing you that French tool earlier. Here it is in several different colors. She has this in 50 colors. Okay. This is Can Can Lace. This is stiff. Right. This is a stiff tool. A little bit stiffer. This comes in 20 colors. This, the 102B, is her French tool that I was talking about that resists ripping. And 50 colors. So uh, this is sable. What a neutral, neutral color. That's lovely. It just about disappears, doesn't it? That's amazing. This is good for, um, you know, everything I talked about when I was showing you the bolt, but it's also very good for replacing the backs of gowns when the tool has ripped. We get a lot of those. Um, the tool you know, the sheer back gowns that they do now, the invisible backs, and the, the tool is damaged, and we have to pull all that lace off and replace the back. Um, this is gonna be your stronger alternative um, when the designer has just used a tool illusion that like ripped all the pieces right away. <laughs> wow, she was very generous to send us all that, so definitely thank her in the comments down below. Um, also, if you have any questions about lace, please leave them in the comments down below. We'll be happy to try to help you with that. All right, so how to order it. Um, here is a packet that I got from them. I just called and ordered this, and basically, um, it just has their contact information in here, and it's a huge file folder full of Xeroxes or um, copy machine copies of the lace. Um, so they put a contrast background behind it and put it through the copy machine and there you have it. Um, this has always been very helpful to me, but you still may need to call and order a sample when you're doing um, like color matching, color comparisons, anything like that. Now see this long list in the upper right hand corner? Um, some of these laces come in a lot of colors. That entire list is a list of the colors. Um, so that's amazing. It's just, it, it seems like unlimited, um, the, the amount of lace and the variety that we have. Um, also know that down below, I'm going to put a coupon code so that when you call to order, um, 
When you call them um, Marilyn, for which their most popular uh, lace is named, she she usually answers the phone. Um, she takes the order over the phone, and when you call her, just let her know um, that you heard um, about her from Bridal Sewing Techniques, and she'll have a little coupon code for you. Uh, she'll have a little coupon, a little discount for you while that is valid, okay? This video is up forever, and her, her uh, discount may not be up forever. So just ask and see if she has a discount available at the time or if it's expired, and if it is still current, she'll be happy to give that to you. Um, so anyways, um, the fashion industry, for those of you who are new to bridal and new to sourcing um, with wholesale um, direct from the mill suppliers kind of things, um, it, it seems a little antiquated sometime, but sometimes, but it's, it's a personal touch. So you're going to call and you're going to talk to them and you're going to order your lace that way. Um, so it's a much more personal than just having a shopping cart. You can actually, uh, build relationships with these people. Um, so I love that, uh, factor of the industry. Also know that when you, uh, call to order, from a, a source such as this, a wholesale supplier to the industry, um, you're going to have minimums, okay? Um, in the industry, they call it the put up. So uh, for each thing that you go to order, you can say, what is, what's your minimum or what is your put up? And they'll tell you, oh, it's six yards or whatever, and it's this much per yard. Um, sometimes they have a put up minimum as far as the length, but then also the total price. Um, so that should be helpful to you also if you've not ordered lace before. Now what I'm doing here is I'm demoing cutting out a lace applique. And uh, what I want you to see in this segment, we, we've now moved on to the segment of how to cut and sew with the lace. I want you to see how I left some of the netting there. And now I'm going to cut it out. So you can compare... Um, how it looks if you're going to leave more of the netting in or less of the netting in. Of course, the netting stabilizes the pattern a little bit better, but you can see how the pattern in this lace really pops when you cut that extra netting out. You're also going to have the choice, and I'll show you later, of removing some of these leaves. Um, maybe you want a bolder look that's just floral and doesn't have the leaves and you want to cut those off. So what's beautiful about this design of lace, and this is the one that I was saying, I think she said is their second most popular lace. What's so amazing about this is that the appliques within this fabric contain mirrors, okay? So that is when you're working with lace, can you flip the lace over and find another piece that is a mirror to what you're doing? Um, you can't always find that. Sometimes in lace, the pattern just repeats. And so it'll have, you know, the, le the top will be tipping to the left and it always tips to the left. Well, if you have mirror pieces, that means some of them, the top is going to tip to the right. And what's great about that is when you need a symmetrical design, say on a bodice or the back of a gown, here's the, um, the style number of that lace if you're wanting to source it. But um, what is great is you can have that symmetry um, on your gown or uh, on the center back of the train. You can put one on each side of the center back, that kind of thing. And if you have a lace that simply repeats, you can't use it that way. That's going to be more of like... Um, for a border or something like that. So here I am cutting off the leaves. So you can see the one on the right doesn't have all the foliage and the one on the left does. Um, so just, you, you can see the level of detail. Now I have cut off the leaves on both and I'm showing you how they mirror. So a super handy pattern this lace is. And here's an example of me cutting that really pretty swing lace off of that wide Marilyn lace piece. finally nearing the end. This is how to sew with the lace. Now, this piece is cut out like a pattern, okay? So there's two different ways to cut it. You can really cut straight lines just like you cut it out with a pattern. And here's an example, one of my little sketches 
where you cut it out using straight lines, you dart it, and then what you're gonna do in this instance is you're gonna go back and you're gonna applique over the seams. This is super common in the industry, as you can imagine for manufacturing. This is very calculated, very reproducible. So we're gonna see this a lot in the industry. Um, and here's an example of it. Um, this is how it would look cut with all those straight edges. I didn't cut around the flowers in the pattern. And then here's an example just on a manufactured gown. This is not French lace, but it's the same concept as far as they have covered the side seam. I'm having to recover that side seam with the lace appliques. Um, so super common. The other way that they do it is uh, this is a side seam okay of say a bodice and we need to put a dart in there instead of cutting straight like this we're going to cut around the applique pieces and just kind of generally make that negative space and then we can move this down um, and then we can hand stitch along the edge of the lace just like this see how that moves and then you don't have straight lines um, so here's an example up close of me stitching kind of along the edges of these blossoms to form a dart. Now, normally I would not use a thread this thick and, and do my stitches quite this far apart if it was on the outside of a bodice. This is going to be covered with an overlay though. So it's fine for it to be strong and this is great for demonstration purposes because it's very clear. But generally you would use a much thinner thread and, and your stitch length would be a little bit shorter, a little closer together. So I hope that this has helped you. If you are a true lace nerd such as myself, I'm sure you've loved every minute of it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Put any questions you have down below. If you're new here, here is my channel trailer. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.